Thank you. Thank you so much for the privilege to be part of this amazing week. Lord, we cannot give you thanks enough for leading us to have a week where we can create the awareness about charity. Father, as your children, you've called us into good works. Your word says you have saved us. And Lord, you didn't save us by good works, but you've saved us unto good works. Therefore, I thank you that you've given us such an understanding. You've given us this privilege to dig into your word so we can have a big picture. We can have a complete understanding. We can be so equipped to do that which we are called to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Daddy, again for the word that has come for the ready. Thank you for day four. My God, what an amazing time we've had with you. Three days of deep kingdom secret, simple but profound. My prayer is that as you build upon it tonight, we will remember to do. Your word says the reward is for the doer. I sign in to be a doer. I pray, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice that we all will sign to be doers of your word as we listen under the influence of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Are you excited, as excited as I am? Day one, we look at what is charity. As a quick recap, charity is different from tithe and offering. Charity is completely different from tithe and offering. If you study our scripture, main text for the week, for this charity week, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, you will come to the conclusion that charity is not done to Christians. Because you will see, say, add to your faith brotherly kindness. And then the end of it is a charity. And we said charity is the last thing to be mentioned, but it is not the least. Please, if you have not, if you haven't, please go back and listen to day one. This is day four. My counsel is that you listen from day one so you can have the consistency because we have been building, yeah, we are built, right? We've been building <laughs> consistently from day one. Day two, we saw that faith, there's a faith requirement for everyone that wants to do charity. We looked at why faith for charity. We explained it detailly that everything we do in this kingdom, we need to do it by faith. You want to do charity because you know what charity is. You have an understanding of charity. That way you'll be what? You'll be outstanding. And we made mention in that particular teaching that Jesus himself needed faith to do charity. Paul the Apostle, after being in ministry for years, needed to be assured that he was doing the right thing, meaning he had to gain understanding or a better understanding. And at the end of the day, he concluded from what he was told, that he, he needs to amplify, focus even more on charity. And we saw that there's a need to pray. If charity depends on faith, then we need to ask God for revelation, revelation of, of how to do what charity is, how to do charity. We also saw that we need help to have a revelation about the benefits of charity, revelation about the various avenues, because you can be in an environment and there's a need for charity and you will not be aware. Why do you pray like this? Because there's a reward for everyone that engages and do it from understanding in charity. When you engage in charity with understanding, you will be rewarded. Venues. We also prayed about company because if, no matter what you know, if you hang around people who don't know what you know, it's a matter of time, you might drop those good characters. A great company will encourage good character. Consistency, we pray for consistency. We pray for patience. We pray for patience to receive our reward. 
And then the last thing we prayed for on day two was that the Lord will help us teach others so they can have the same results that we are now seeing or experiencing in our charitable act. Yesterday, oh my, 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 the third day was amazing. And we focus on the willing heart we hear and do, the place of our heart in everything we do. I'm asking that you go back and listen to yesterday's uh, um, teaching. I think it was one of the most profound teaching that we have heard in recent days. It's always a good thing to have a heart check. From time to time, let's check our heart. Uh, I like this song by a songwriter. So when it's all been said and done, it's only the things I'm singing, I'm putting in my own words, I'm paraphrasing, putting some phrases in my own words so you can understand better. Is it only the things that we did for love's reward will stand the taste of time? Meaning that we need to check our hearts from time to time to see, uh, um, to make sure that the things we do and how we do them is from a place of love. Because we live in a world that is contrary to love. Therefore, there are times when we can be hit by some unseen um, dramas or forces to the point where we forget that we ought to do everything in love, especially charity. Glory to God. Um, we saw that you will hear the Lord when you, you will only hear, because faith comes by hearing, you will only hear the faith that will help you do charity when your heart is willing to do. Hallelujah. Um, it's important to go back and listen to it. I'm tempted to give a very detailed summary, but we're making progress to today. Oh my, my, say today, hallelujah. I want somebody to scream at the top of your voice on YouTube, on WhatsApp, wherever you're listening, um, Zoom, well, yes, I want you to scream today. My God, my God, today feels like it's the end, but I'm expecting about what he will say tomorrow. If today is looking this good, I promise you, you want to listen to what he will say tomorrow. I have made up my mind not to write down anything before coming to teach. All of the notes, the teachings we've done so far, I received directly, direct, direct from the Holy Spirit. 10 to 15 minutes before we come. So I don't think and over-process them. Um, if you know Miss Ima, she teach. So if I hear this word maybe two, three hours before, <laughs> you're going to be, uh, uh, be listening to me on a subject maybe for three hours. You see how much God loves all of us? Tonight, we're looking at charity. It's a fight of faith. Type that in the chat box. Charity. It's a fight of faith. Now, I want us to remind ourselves that charity is an act of faith. And what does the Bible tell you and me? We know from John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that, charity, that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. What does that leave you with? It tells you up front that it's going to be a fight. Do you not see why the Bible in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 7, it says, act to your faith. Because this faith fight can be won cheap, easier, quicker when you add charity to your faith projects. Um, when you look at the book, when you look at the book of First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, it says, for true, okay, let's do this before we come to Timothy. Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, it says that clearly, very clear. He said, the righteous, the righteous shall live by faith. Or a righteous person, a kingdom citizen, shall live by faith. The King James Version says, the just or the justified one shall live by faith. Let's remind ourselves about um, our focus for tonight. Our focus for tonight is charity is a fight of faith. That tells you and I, one of the reasons we are here and we should take really serious is charity. Doing good to the needy, doing good to anyone that is in need. But it's going to be a fight. If you've ever studied faith, 
you realize that faith is a process. And one of the stages in the faith process is called what? The fight of faith. It said the just shall live by faith. And the good thing about faith is that it's called a good, the, the good thing about the fight of faith or charity being a fight of faith is that it is a good work. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. Why do we need the fight of faith in order to do charity? Why the fight of faith in order to do charity? In scripture, the Bible has told you and I clearly, the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violence take it by force. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God will suffer violence, not maybe. The kingdom of God, that is Matthew 11, verse 12. Since the day, from the days, from the days of John the Baptist until now, <laughs> until today, until forever, every time you say now, it means now. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven has been subjugated to violence. And only violent people have taken it by force. Let me read it from the King James. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent or violent people take it by force. I'm interested in seeing what the contemporary will say. From the time of John the Baptist until now, violent people have been trying to take over the kingdom of heaven by force. Now, if we look at, I, I want us to, to think for a minute when he talks about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, what is it really talking about? It's talking about God's ways of doing things, God's government in your life, the way God wants your life to go or for the way, the way God wants us to submit to his government. God wants us to come under his word. You and I have seen it clearly in the word that charity is God's will. We have seen it in the world that Jesus did charity. We have seen it, Jesus being the pattern man, did charity. Now that you know, this is good news for some people. This might be an aha moment for somebody. This might be, um, now I understand, right? Now that you know, I can tell you the truth. If you don't fight to do charity, if you don't press if you don't add the additional effort to do charity, you might not do charity. That's the suffering and that's the violence because the enemy will always come against the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel of empowerment, the gospel of dominion, the gospel that says you are above. Do you know why many people don't get into charity? Because they see themselves as a charitable project. Uh oh, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. If you can see yourself as the one that is so blessed, you will look for opportunities to be a blessing. Why does the kingdom suffer violence and the violent need to take it by force? Because there's a reward when you do kingdom principles. Let's make progress. Why is charity a fight? The first point we get. We said the reason charity is a fight of faith is because it is a kingdom approach to living. It is how we expand the kingdom of God. But the enemy will not want you to do it just like that, even though you now have the understanding. Why will he want you to postpone it? Why will he want you to give excuses? Why will he want you to say it's not that important? Oh, it's not an emergency. Uh, I can do it when, I'm, when I want. I will do it when I'm ready. Why does he want you to do that? Because he knows that delay obedience is disobedience. Because he knows that if you postpone it and do it at your own time, the grace, the anointing, the enablement to do it will not be there. Let's make progress. Why is charity a fight of faith? Point number two. It is a good fight. When done right, charity will fast forward your faith resolve. It is a beautiful thing to see a child of God 
walk through their process of faith to the end. The process of faith starts with a willing heart to hear that we saw yesterday. But then you get to a point where you heard, you begin to do. There comes a time when it looks like that project will not come to pass. What do you do? You ask the Lord or you pray about it. Yes, asking the Lord in prayer, or you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a charitable act, a charitable gesture, a charitable opportunity. When you do it, it will fast forward your faith process or your faith project and take you to the beautiful end, not just where you see results, but where you begin to teach other people to see results. So it's a fight because it has the potential. Charity is a fight of faith because it has the ability, charity, good works, has the ability to fast forward your faith project. Do you have something you believe in the Lord for? And you're at the point where you're like, how do I get to the end of this project? I bring you good news. I show you a shorter curve. Get into charity. Be a blessing to somebody in need. This is not about tithe and offering. This is about being a blessing to somebody who will never give back to you. And watch how your faith project will be fast forwarded. Why is charity a fight of faith? Because it overcomes the world system. Oh, glory to God. The Bible is clear. We read it. That was the first, the second of the first scripture we just read. It says that clearly that faith is the victory, not a victory. The, the definite article. Victory that overcomes the world. What is the world stands for? What does the word the world stand for in this particular scripture? It's a broad spectrum scripture. If you don't understand what broad spectrum scripture is, if you're listening to me, I know those on Zoom, they already know what that means. But if you're listening to me on YouTube, you can leave us a comment and we'll respond. This scripture, the key of uh, this scripture, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. One of the lenses you can look through is showing you that any thing that is almost like impossible in this world, if you apply the force of faith, you will come on the other side. You will overcome it. You will go over it and you make it to the other side. Most of our faith projects are in the world. For example, you're believing God for promotion at work. It needs human beings that are living on earth. Yes, you can quote scriptures and say, all the earth and the fullness and the people thereof belong to my God. All the hands of the kings are in the hands of the Lord. That's great. But what about doing something that you'll be more, you'll be assured. I, I know scriptures are powerful. I know scripture is power, not powerful. Scripture is power, right? But look at this. How about you get a scripture that cuts through and cuts faster? A charitable act done in faith. You're in the faith project. The process is going on. And you come to a point where you're like, wait, I think there's a fight here. Daddy. I need a seat. One of our BBI students this year, BBI is Bill Bible Institute. She, she, she took her exam. She was looking at the exam. Now, this is not charity. This is giving as to giving. Then think about what charity will do if you're giving, free will giving can do what, uh, um, do what happened to the student. The student said, um, there, are, there are questions. I am not sure what to say. Holy Spirit, help me. And the student sowed a seed. And this, I believe that it definitely is a seed of understanding or revelation, whatever they named that seed. It wasn't up to how many minutes they began to understand. I'm showing you the power of faith, the power of faith seed or seed faith in this kingdom. Now, what if that seed was sown um, to a charitable organization? They were led to it. It was sown to a needy person. Now, we don't know where, we don't know if where they sow the seed is where they were led to sow. It's always good to be led to sow your seed. But there, there comes a time as a child of God where we get into maturity. And one of the things we do are things that we've already seen in scriptures. Not necessarily because we were told, but it's good to be led. 
now that we know that charity is a fight and it's a good fight. We have seen clearly that it will suffer violence because that's what God's ways of doing things go through. Every time you want to leave a marriage where you're submissive to your husband as a wife, it looks like that's when all the demons come on the husband, right? Do I have a witness in the house? It's like, oh, that's when the man becomes something else. Why? Because the kingdom suffer violence. You want to be the best wife, but then the kingdom of darkness is like, uh-uh, we're not going to let you do it. But what do you do? You stay in faith. Uh-huh, I see my sisters responding. You see, number two we saw was when you do a charitable work, knowing that it's a fight of faith, you will fast forward the process and bring about your faith project. Now, as we conclude, please add charity to your faith. Please do charity by faith. And when you get to a point where your charitable works are stagnant, you get to a point where your faith process and project are stagnant, guess what? Add charity. So in conclusion, as we conclude, there are a few things I want us to remind ourselves. You need faith for charity and you need charity during your faith project. Glory to God. Did you hear that? You need faith for charity and you need to do charitable acts for your faith to be effective. No doubt that scripture says add to your faith, charity. So charity is a fertilizer to faith and faith, the faith process is enhanced when we do charitable work. Now that you know, it is up to you to fight and do your charitable work. It is up to you to make up your mind. Let's fight and do good work. Let's fight and do charitable work. I hope you remember Matthew chapter 24. Jesus said on that day, he's going to ask us, guess what? You're in the kingdom. Your judgment is not going to be about sin. Can you listen to me one more time? This email is giving us a license to say, no, if you want to, you don't need a license. But this is the truth. Our judgment is going to be on how we use the resources that came through our hands. And that's what our time, money, resources, relationships, let's be spiritually intelligent and do what? And fight the fight of faith, even as we do charity. I pray you have learned something. I pray this has blessed you. My prayer is that you will do and you'll be consistent. Even when there is a fight, you will not stop. You will do it until you are able to see great results. You will teach others. Remember, until you teach others to see the results that you see and see even better results, you're not yet great in the kingdom. So do charity. Fight until you are called great in this kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.